with a population of approximately 1.4 million people here in Trinidad and Tobago, many are suffering in different corners of the country. This is why at 9 p.m. every night, we have a prayer for the nation. Hello, dear friend, a special good night to you all. Now is 9.02. We are going to do this special prayer on your behalf. I have here uh, the holy oil throughout of the day. We were placing some people's name inside of the holy oil. And while I'm going to pray for the country of Trinidad and Tobago, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for those names that is here inside of the holy oil. Okay? Please, if you can, get yourself ready. Let us pray in order for God to bless our nation. If you have a glass of water, hold it in your hands because I'm going to pray for Trinidad and Tobago. Also, I'm going to pray for you. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I know, Lord, that there are many Trinidadians, many Tobagonians praying together with me. People, my Lord, that they are fed up to see the way that the Trinidad and Tobago is. Mothers, crime, violence, domestic abuse, corruption, my Lord, and many other things that have been taking place in our country. That even the authorities of this nation, my Lord, they cannot afford to control it. My Lord, I pray to you because if there is someone that is capable, that is able to reverse whatever we have been going through here in Trinidad and Tobago, this one is you, my Lord. And I ask you, my God, deliver our country. Set our country free from all the works of the devil. My God, pass with your power. Destroy, my Lord, whatever curse, whatever evil that have been done here in Trinidad and Tobago. My Lord, I rebuke this evil right now. Also, I pray on behalf of this person that cannot be able to sleep well during the night. My God, set this person free. Deliver this person, my Lord, from the suicidal spirit, from the suicidal thoughts. My Father, I pray and I ask you on behalf of all the ministers of our country, all the, all my Lord, the nurses, doctors, the firefighters, my Lord, those who are unemployed, I place their lives into your mighty hands. And I determine Trinidad and Tobago, be blessed, be protected in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My Lord, consecrate and bless our water, for when we drink, we may be able to receive to taste of your power. And whoever believes, say, I believe, say, Amen. Do you believe it, friend? You may drink right now from your what? Well, friend, I am 100% sure that God, He heard our prayer. However, we needed to take an action. That's why tonight at midnight, a man of God is going to be here telling you, teaching you, what you should do to get your body closed. What you should do to receive God's shield upon you, upon your family. At midnight, you are going to receive a direction, an inspiration how to be protected by God. However, tomorrow at 9 p.m., we are going to be together here praying for Trinidad and Tobago, especially now, this time that many things happen. You know what I'm talking about. We need to pray in order for God to protect us, protect our family, and bless our nation. Okay? May the spirit of the living God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Denise, and this is my story. Everything started when my dad left the house, and I was left with my mom, who started suffering from depression. That led me to, at the age of eight, me getting addicted to pornography. And that's how I was. And from there, it just led me to go from good girl turned bad because I was just trying to find a way out. So it wasn't just pornography. From the pornography, it led me to have a very sexual mind. And things that people would see normal, I would always see in an extra sexual way. So I remember being a teenager, um, I was 13 and I remember I used to wear really short shorts, really tight clothes. Um, I was really bubbly. I wanted to kind of show off myself just to kind of get that attention. And I remember I used to love the attention and then the more attention I got is the more attention that I wanted to do. And then I used to just 
exaggerate even the way that I was. So instead of being like an ordinary girl, I just wanted to be extraordinary. If a girl dressed up a certain way, I wanted to dress even crazier just to kind of show that I was the boss and I was the best type of girl. And then that led me to getting into the wrong crowds with the wrong people. I started hanging out with the wrong friends that were involved with gang members, girls that used to sleep around, that used to drink, party, smoke. So I started going out with my friends, going out partying, started drinking, started smoking. And then my friend introduced me to a guy. And this guy I thought was my world. You know, he was the ideal guy in those times that you would think, oh my gosh, like he's my everything. And due to the pressure of everything, I ended up sleeping, up sleeping with him. But what happened is the next day, or like two days later, he actually stopped speaking to me. And I had fake friends at that time. Like I had people that were around me that I just needed to be around me. And even with that, like I had no friends that were there to really support me or really help me. So that was me really. I used to go out with guys, sleep around with them. I remember there was a guy as well that he was in a gang, he was a drug dealer. And for me, he was, you know, my world. And I remember he set me up with my friend and they had a bet and he voice recorded us having sex and he sent it around to everyone in my neighborhood. Um, social media, I must say, had a big part to play in the way that I changed because I remember when I first started watching TV, my mind was quite pure and innocent. And from the things that I used to see on TV, on my social medias, like those days we had Bebo and MySpace, um, it really kind of changed my view on things. It made me want to be something that I wasn't. Like the things that I used to see, like girls, you know, for an example, you know, at a certain angle looking light skin. And I thought, oh my gosh, like I'm a black girl and how am I supposed to kind of look the way that they're looking? Or when I would see a girl dressed in a certain way, very curvy, very, you know, very lustful. And I was just there kind of covered up you know, dressed down. And I kind of thought that I was missing out on something through the things that I used to see on social media. So for me, it was like, I need to kind of fit in, in what I was seeing. So the way the girls used to dress, the way they would act, the way they would do their makeup, the way they would be is the way that I wanted to be, just to kind of fit in. What was the worst part of my life? There was quite a few moments that I must say were really bad. One of them was the time that I caught an STI and I had a miscarriage. Because I remember I had no one to speak to about it. I literally went through the whole process by myself. And it wasn't even until I came to the youth group that I even spoke to someone about the pain that was inside of me. Another moment I must say that was the lowest part was actually the way I received my child and had a miscarriage because the guy actually raped me. And that's something I never even accepted in my mind for a long period of time. Even years down the line, because for me, I like to suffer. Even years down the line, things for me got even worse because I was in a lifestyle when I was in college where I wasn't happy and I was in this lifestyle. I would take pictures, but then after taking the pictures, I would go home and cry. And I remember the last relationship I was in, um, before I decided, you know what, enough is enough, was with a guy that I knew from when I was really young. He was like one of my first boyfriends that I ever had. And things started to get a lot violent. I remember he used to choke my throat. So how was I invited to the VYG? I remember I was just walking down the street with my, one of my friends. And I remember someone stopped me and they asked me, do I want to go for a youth event? And I remember the first time that I came into the VYG, this is what made me stay. Even though I didn't want to take things seriously. I remember when I came, everyone was so happy. And for me, this was something that I never experienced in my whole life. People that came into a place that weren't fighting, that weren't angry. And I remember I felt so much peace. So I remember that's what made me stay in the youth group. What I was so happy about is that when I did come to speak to someone, they didn't come to judge me. They didn't put their fingers on me and say, Denise, why did you do that? Why did that happen? But instead they were there to encourage me. They were there to believe in me. The Denise today doesn't need social media. 
to say how she's going to be happy. The Denise today doesn't need guys, doesn't need friends, doesn't need the company around her to determine who she's going to be. Today, I'm truly an example to people that are around me. The relationship between me and my mum has changed. The relationship between me and my family members has changed. What advice would I give to you who's coming to this event today on how can you change your life? Well, for me, I would say be sincere, be real. And everything you're hearing, if you take it seriously,